she's staring at. So once upon a time, Capcom created a game called 1942, a World War II themed vertical scrolling shooter where you controlled an American Lockheed P-38 Lightning plane dubbed the Super Ace. And your main goal was to shoot down the entire Japanese army through 32 stages of Pacific theater reenactments. You do this in a game made by the Japanese, by the way. 1942 is a fairly humble, somewhat rudimentary shooter, but popular enough to warrant sequels such as 1943, 1943 Kai, 1944, 19xx, and so on and so forth, and these would be far more comparatively crazier endeavors, but we're not talking about any of those games today. 1942 got a number of home ports, one of which being on the Nintendo Entertainment System, courtesy of Micronix, and this was one of those games that would frequent many an aftermarket multi-cart. And... This is not great. The frame rate's janky, sound is somewhat rough and horrid, the flickering is maddening. Just about the only saving grace is that at, at least it plays well enough, but that's okay, we're not talking about this one either. Instead, today's subject matter is 1942, released in the year 2000 for the Game Boy Color courtesy of Capcom and developed by Digital Eclipse. This is a quality port of a fairly average shooter with a couple neat options, such as a difficulty setting as well as passwords. Yes, the game gives you passwords every few stages cleared, which is nice and convenient for the portable front, but anyway, 1942 is fairly basic fare. You fly a little plane, you shoot down other little planes, along with slightly bigger planes and every once in a while a very big plane, all the while avoiding getting shot down yourself, because that'll set you back a distance if you die. If you shoot down a wave of red planes that fly by, they'll drop a power-up. Power-ups vary depending on the color of the power-up. Either your firepower gets boosted, the screen gets nuked, or a couple wingmen will come in and give you extra fire, while essentially making you a somewhat larger target. Power-ups are not randomly dropped. Specific formations yield specific power-ups, so after repeated playthroughs, you'll have a better feel as to when to expect certain power-ups by way of determining the formation. Your only other option beyond that is an evasive loop that lets you evade enemy attacks by pressing the A button, though try not to run into anything by the time you finish the loop. You only have a limited number of loops and at the end of each stage you gain a thousand points for every unused loop. You're also awarded points for the percentage of planes shot down in a stage. Needless to say, the more you shoot down, the higher you score, and every few thousand points or so scored will net you an extra life which proves somewhat useful in furthering your campaign. 1942 is not exactly the most exciting shooting game, especially in comparison to its sequels which start getting more and more outlandish with each passing title, but it does play about as well as you'd expect a 1984 vertically inclined scrolling shooter to play, and there's some fun to be had within these 32 levels of shooting down. Checkpoint. Obviously the reduction in resolution means far less real estate to move around in, but this actually makes 1942 a bit more manageable at times, perhaps even a bit easier, even. Control is fairly straightforward and responsive, which is nice. It's only a couple buttons and a D-pad. Not much more to it than that. And again, the password, which you get every few stages, is a nice convenience of continuing your progress, though it doesn't record your lives, power-ups, or score if you care for such things. Graphically, the game looks fine. Obviously, the reduced screen real estate means a more cramped play field to retain the size of the sprites and all that. But on the bright side, the very sprites and terrain have faithfully recreated to the 8-bit GBC format. The frame rate is considerably smoother compared to the NES port, which at times wasn't the most smoothest moving thing. There's new intermissions in between stages, and the action runs at a fairly consistent pace. A good-looking game all around. 1942 sounds rather less abrasive than the NES version, which is the only real compliment I'll levy towards this port's audio. Now to be fair, 1942 generally had no in-game music save for a couple jingles here and there. Most of the audio was just tinny drum beats and a looping Morse code message of sorts, which starts to grate after a while. Now you can disable the quote-unquote music in the options if desired, and that only leaves the sound effects, which are only slightly better. Overall, 1942 for the Game Boy Color is a superb conversion of Capcom's 1984 arcade classic and a more pleasant port compared to the older NES version, which is all I was really expecting out of this conversion. It's a fairly simple game, but a fun one at that, and this GBC port of 1942 does the game enough justice within its own technical limits. All in all, a perfectly fine arcade shmup on the go. Though if you were to have a Switch on hand, Arcade Stadium is probably a better bet. 
You could hold it like a tate or a tote or whatever the word is. I, I, I don't know. I really don't care. Bye. does play about as well as you'd expect a 1984 vertically inclined scrolling shooter to play, and there's some fun to be had within these 32 levels of shooting down. Obviously, the reduction in resolution means far less real estate to move around in, but this...